हेलो एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू द स्पेशल सेशन दैट्स ऑन टोटल हिप रिप्लेसमेंट द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स एंड आई एम डॉक्टर मुकुल मोहिंद्रा योर ऑर्थोपेडिक फैकल्टी हेयर एट एन अकेडमी सो बिफोर वी गेट गोइंग विद द सेशन टुडे कैन आई जस्ट आस्क यू गाइस टू रेज योर थंब इफ द ऑडियो विजुअल इज वर्किंग वेल which means you can see me you can hear me clearly you can see what i'm writing on the board okay so i hope things are okay people who are watching uh i think we get good to go so this is a topic you know that specially focused for the upcoming neat and the maybe the next and the inict papers now lots of questions have been coming up on these advanced orthopedic surgeries what i've made it out from the last few years especially the inict part and of course even in the neat pg paper and most of the things are not given in your routine books in a good way so the whole idea behind this session is to you know give you some points that give you that extra edge in your exams provided you have attended this lecture so let me just start the session today you are very much familiar that this word replacement technically in orthopedics is called by this term arthroplasty arthroplasty means replacing a joint uh, or you can say resurfacing the articular surfaces now arthroplasty is actually divided into three categories the earliest era was the era of excisional arthroplasty like see here the hip joint totally has been excised because the idea was to alleviate pain this used to be a very popular procedure of the olden days that was called as gordon stones arthroplasty of the hip where the whole articular surface of the hip would be excised just to make sure that the pain would go away but excisional arthroplasties would have problems unstable gaits people would find it difficult you know to have the natural length the natural movement so repercussion of the anatomy was not possible so eventually this faded away an era came in that was called interpositional arthroplasty where some kind of a soft tissue would be interposed between the articular surfaces for example you would take a strip of fascia lata from the thigh now interpose it in between the articular surfaces in an attempt to alleviate the pain so this was also tried eventually when they did not meet much of success this is where the golden era started the era of replacement arthroplasty where the joint would be excised and it would be replaced usually by metals although we have now moved on to better substances which are the ceramics even better than the metals but metals remain to be the conventional choices and usually it is titanium or the cobalt chromium alloys that are being used most of the times today to replace the articular surfaces this replacement arthroplasty first started up with the hip when this person by this name john chanley from uk performed the first successful arthroplasty and thereafter tremendous developments came up and this just became an over the counter job now this replacement arthroplasty at the hip is further categorized into two types total hip replacement and a hemi hip replacement hemi arthroplasty hemi arthroplasty is basically only and only indicated in a fracture of neck of femur in young people who are under the age of 60 years okay generally in fresh cases where the injury is less than 3 weeks old Oh, sorry very uh, not in fresh cases in old cases i would say more than 60 years old sorry for this small small issue uh, this hemi arthroplasty the basic indication as of today is just in just this fracture of neck of the femur 
and this is rather taken up in people who are older than 60 years beyond 60 years so please make the small correction so hemiarthroplasty would generally be taken with older people with fracture of neck of femur that is the only condition for hemiarthroplasty total hip replacement is taken when you have an advanced osteoarthritis in the hip so these are the indications for taking up these two different surgeries so hemiarthroplasty is basically for a fracture case total hip replacement is taken up when there is osteoarthritis involving the hip joint now i know you would like to know the difference between the two surgeries so if you see this x-ray of hemiarthroplasty you can see the head and neck has been replaced by a metal prosthesis but the acetabulum has not been touched so only half of the joint is replaced but if you see this extra of total hip replacement i hope you can see a cup on the acetabulum fixed to the pelvis with a screw and there is a femoral head and neck also so both sides of the joints have been replaced whenever people ask me so i still not understood the difference between the two I just ask them the best way to understand the difference is to look at these x-rays of a dislocated prosthesis this is the hemiarthroplasty prosthesis that is dislocated and you can see this prosthesis is a complete piece the astabulum has nothing in it now so that means only head and neck was replaced with the single prosthesis but if you see this x-ray of a dislocated total hip replacement i hope you can see the two different components there's an astabular part and there's a femoral part so two different things replaced femur side replaced acetabulum replaced so i hope you clearly understood the difference between the two 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 surgeries any queries guys people watching anything not clear till now please please feel free to ask me the chat box is uh, totally visible to me in a live way you ask a query i'll clear it here and fine now let me first take you through a little bit of the principles of hemiarthroplasty now, as I told you, hemiarthroplasty is doing fracture of neck of femur. Now, this prosthesis we use in hemiarthroplasty is further again, you know, categorized into two types. Now, hemiarthroplasty prosthesis can be either unipolar design or a bipolar design. So, what you would find with the unipolar that there will be single point of movement okay that's it so it's totally a single piece prosthesis and this prosthesis moves in the acetabula but if you look at the bipolar design it's absolutely different so what, what you have over here that there will be a head that moves in a shell and there will be a shell that moves in the acetabulum like i'll just show you there's a head here this metal head and then there is a shell so this head moves in the shell and then the shell moves in the acetabulum so if there's an acetabulum here this shell will move in the acetabulum and the head in the shell so there are two planes of points of movement but here it is the complete prosthesis moving in the acetabulum so here we will have the prosthesis moving in acetabulum so i hope you are clear with the difference between the two designs now out of the two the popular design as of today has been the bipolar because there was a problem with this unipolar design acetabular erosions this would lead to protrusio acetabuli and this would cause thigh pain and the failure of the surgery see if this whole huge prosthesis would be moving in the acetabulum that would erode the acetabulum leading to protrusio so that is why i came in the bipolar designs the designs we favor today because of cost constraints some places the unipolar design still continue to be used there are two popular unipolar designs 
one is an Austin Moore prosthesis and one is a Thompson prosthesis. Both of them are unipolar designs. In Austin Moore, you have two holes. Austin Moore, M O O O O. These holes are basically to put in bone graft so that this prosthesis can encourage in the bone with graft. That is the whole idea. But do have a look at two designs. You find a solid stem, that is Thompson prosthesis. You find two O's, that is a Austin Moore prosthesis. So these are the processes we have for hemiarthroplasty. Now a hemiarthroplasty prosthesis is pretty much different from a total hip replacement prosthesis. So a little about this total hip replacement prosthesis. So indication we are very much clear. This is osteoarthritis of the hip, which could be a primary osteoarthritis age related or it could be secondary osteoarthritis occurring from any cause rheumatoid arthritis trauma infection so anything tuberculosis that leads to osteoarthritis that would also be an indication for total hip replacement and mind you mind you mind you osteoarthritis of the hip what do i mean by this when on an x-ray you are unable to see the joint space. So this is the head, this is the astabulum. And normally there will be a hip joint space between the two. That space is actually the articular cartilage, mm -hmm. joint cartilage. Cartilage is not visible on x-ray, so you see it as a space. So when that cartilage is gone, this joint space is gone. And that is when you say this is osteoarthritis of the hip. And this is where a total hip replacement is indicated. Now, a total hip replacement prosthesis mm. is meant to set in the natural anatomy. So, it has components. It has components. So, there is an acetabular component in a total hip replacement prosthesis. And there is a femoral component in a total hip replacement prosthesis. So one acetabular component, two femoral component. Now this acetabular component will have a shell and a polyethylene liner. Polyethylene is like a rubber. So you need to have, you know, rubber between two metals. So there will be a metal shell and a polyethylene liner in the acetabular component. And in the femoral component, there will be a metal femoral head and a metal femoral stem. So a shell, a liner will make up the acetabular component. A head, a stem will make up the femoral component. And this is the articulating surface generally in most of the designs where a polyethylene rubber liner articulates with the head so this is where the movement occurs between this rubber and the head a head will move on a rubber there will be very less friction clear why these articulating surfaces have been chosen so i hope you understood the design and you can very well make out that you know there are so many components in a total hip replacement surgery because the idea is to replenish the anatomy. So we have to fit in a shell that matches the patient size, we have to fit in a head that matches the patient size, so we have to articulate them all on the table to give the natural anatomy. Clear? A hemiarthroplasty, these variations are not possible. They are all single type of prosthesis. You cannot disarticulate. So golden thing. Hemiarthroplasty prosthesis can't disarticulate they are just single pieces to put them as itself as in itself in the in the body but total hip replacement prosthesis you clearly seen multiple components femoral component acetabular component femoral component has a shell has a liner uh, sorry acetabular component has a shell and a liner and then a femoral component has a head and a stem These are generally the articulating surfaces that are also possible apart from the 
metal and polyethylene articulation so this is the commonest articulation we generally use metal on polyethylene most of the times this metal and polyethylene articulation but apart from it there are some other articulations also possible which means metal head metal liner which means metal head ceramic liner which means ceramic head ceramic liner so these are alternative articulating surfaces the articulating surfaces in a joint replacement prosthesis are also called bearing surfaces synonymous these are basically the points of movement in a simple way as i would tell you so as i told you we would have a polyethylene liner in a metal head this is the standard but you can also choose other articulations like if you look here there is a ceramic head and this is a ceramic liner so ceramic on ceramic and then you can also have metal on ceramic metal on metal this could be metal this could be only metal possible 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 so are you clear with the choices we have with us ceramic on ceramic is the surface where you tend to have the least wear rates so this is particularly suited for young people otherwise most commonly used is the metal on poly which has some of the best properties this was abandoned after little bit of use because of some toxicity of the metal not much used now but options is still available so i hope you are clear with this total hip replacement prosthesis in a very crystal clear manner fine enough okay now if this prosthesis components they have to be fixed the methods we have with us the conventional mode of fixation was to use something called bone cement i think you are familiar with this word bone cement this is basically a chemical compound which is nothing else poly methyl metha acrylate pmma so this was the conventional fixation method that was used to fix these prosthesis in the initial days the problem was that this design was giving us earlier loosenings because cement would fail after a few years so that is why I came in this design uncemented fixation that you don't use cement and you fix the prosthesis here you have less loosening rates and how do you have less loosening rates let me explain so when you are using the uncemented fixation the initial fixation tends to be press fit means snug fit tight fit but with time there is a capacity in the prosthesis for bone in growth because the prosthesis has a porous surface means it has tiny pores so you spray the prosthesis with some special molten metal that gives it fine pores so bone can grow into the prosthesis and once bone grows into the prosthesis prosthesis becomes a part of the bone so definitely there can never be loosening so that's what we aim as of today uncemented fixation in most of the cases but sometimes you know the person is too old 90 years 95 years now we are not expecting much of a life span and then you know we are not expecting much of either bone in growth because he's a too old frail patient so we can go into the cement fixation but wherever possible this is the method we generally tend to choose clear enough guys so so any queries till now any queries because because no queries are coming up so anything not clear to you guys so please please feel free to ask me so people who are watching 
any any doubt anything you wish to say say something say something anything 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 i just waved a hi to you any any doubts still up so i hope you've you've cleared with these fixation types okay okay now although you have understood the fixation methods the general types we use now using cement in the acetabulum is like uh, never done so acetabular fixation we generally never do with cement high failure rates failure very high so the combination method that can be used one is femur is fixed in uncemented way and acetabulum is also fixed in uncemented way the second is femur is fixed in uncemented way and acetabulum sorry femur is fixed in cemented way but acetabulum is kept uncemented so either of the two ways we go this will be called a hybrid fixation method and this is totally uncemented fixation method so this is how mostly we are you know doing most of the cases that even if you have to use a cement in an old patient we generally keep only femur cemented we mostly try to avoid cement on the acetabular side because of high rates of loosening clear with this guys and as far as the surgical approaches are concerned we can approach the hip from the anterior side we can approach the hip from the posterior side or we can approach the hip from the lateral side the advantage of the anterior approach that there is least dislocation rate but the problem here is least exposure difficult the advantage with the posterior approach it gives you the best exposure but the problem with the posterior approach you have the highest dislocation rate if you are with surgery this is the balanced approach but the approach is by and large surgeon preference what you are trained on and what is best in your hand is what you choose and if you do this surgery the complications that are possible of course infection if your sterilization was not maintained you can have peri prosthetic fractures which means fractures in and around the prosthesis you can have dvt because patient is sedentary for a while and then you know dvt can also end up with pulmonary embolism at times then you can have neurovascular injuries if you are not fine with your techniques especially with the posterior approach there is a chance for a sciatic nerve injury so these are some of the common problems that trouble us and not to mention there is a chance of a dislocation if you have not done your surgery nicely and in case you ask me the most common overall complication and the troublesome complication that tends to be loosening especially with the cement fixation so these are some of the complications you have to keep in mind okay that's the whole scenario and mikito we can't do nailing in these x-rays that i've shown you because you know the joint is gone so we have to replace the joint a dead thing can only be replaced that's all from my side regarding total hip replacement surgery any idea which is the commonest complication of a total hip replacement surgery out of the all i have shown you any idea you want to take any guesses that out of all the complications i've spoken of which is the commonest complication of thr let me see how many people were listening to me carefully yes how many people are listening to me very carefully infection no 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 it is actually dvt dvt occurs in almost 70% cases but it is only in 1 to 5% cases where it goes on to become pulmonary embolism so pulmonary embolism does not occur in 1 but every one in dvt and loosening this is the most common long term complication clear with this and i must tell you the best marker in case you are suspecting infection because infection is definitely an important complication it is interleukin 6 
So I hope you are clear with some MCQs also from this area. Clear with this? Okay. Just showing you the most advanced version of the joint replacement surgeries. Now sometimes you know we are dealing with tumors where a part of bone has to be excised because you have to save the life of the patient by removing the tumor. So here we tend to use mega prosthesis and mega prosthesis are capable of replacing multiple joints. So even these kind of things have come up today. Like see in this case, this was a tumor in the thigh. So whole femur has been excised. And you can see the hip joint replaced. You can see the knee joint replaced. So both these joints have been replaced. So even these kind of surgeries are done. And the prosthesis where multiple joints are replaced, mega prosthesis. Clear? So I hope you're clear with this also. Okay. So DBT is the commonest complication as I told you to prevent DVT in every patient we go with prophylactic anticoagulation and your query for how long six weeks we take this patient on this tablet ecosprin aspirin 75 mg given in an HS dose so clear me to with the protocol so I hope you are clear with this query of yours also and if you are clear with these things a word about hip arthroscopy we have also started now arthroscopy in the hip wherein we put a camera in the joint and we repair the structures the commonest reason for which an arthroscopy in the hip is being done is this problem femoroacetabular impingement actually what has been seen that a number of cases where osteoarthritis is found in the hip there is generally a precursor lesion called femoroacetabular impingement in these people when they are young they have an abnormal osteophyte formation in the acetabulum or on the head neck junction this impinges with the acetabulum in the joint and these osteophyte impingements eventually lead to degeneration of the joints so with the you know identification of this femoral acetabulum impingement as a problem it has been seen that you know eventually a replacement surgery can be avoided in a good number of people if this is tackled in a primary way this femoral acetabular impingement at the hip is basically of two types there is a pincer impingement and there is a cam impingement the problem in the cam impingement is that the femoral head shape is abnormal. The problem in the pincer head impingement that the acetabulum is carrying an osteophyte impinging on the femoral head. So impingement is the key. And these impingements eventually lead to the liberal tears in the hip like this. And this is what finally culminates as osteoarthritis demanding joint replacements so arthroscopy of the hip we put a camera in the joint and we repair these structures under your vision is what is being now advocated to eventually prevent a total hip replacement at least you know that result from primary osteoarthritis of the hip primary means age related because possibly these are just the cases where there have been earlier impingements leading to acetabular liberal tears so clear guys with this small term also so I hope you enjoyed the classes. In case you wish to attend more such classes, please buy the subscription. Catch me up as a subscriber. I hope you're clear with the benefits of a plus subscription and I hope you're clear to maximize your benefit. You can even go with the iconic subscription where you can take an academy prep ladder, both subscriptions at highly discounted prices. So just taking you through some important features. There's an excellent question bank we have with us. You can go with an academy light subscription in case you're going to uh, just practice questions from an academy app. Otherwise, these are some of the batches, you know, that's, uh, that are going on right now for the NEET, the FMG and the INICT aspirants. So you can just choose the batch that you want to join in. They've just started, so you can join in almost as a fresh candidate. This is the test calendar I'm sharing with you, uh, the test series that you know they're going at an academy. So you can practice also and improve your skills. And, and, and these are the subscription prices, very, very, very economical. And yes, I must, must let you know that if you use this code, you can have almost 42%, half of the amount of 
if you are eyeing a subscription for a longer duration you can use this code otherwise you can use my referral code in case you wish to avail your 10 percent off my referral code is ortho life so you can use this referral code and fetch your discounts so that's all from my side for today so any queries if at all there are from your side they are most welcome okay so there's a query from Samir how will be able to detect these precursors before the arthritis symptoms start so you mean to say how will we detect FAI perfect a wonderful query these people come to you with the hip pain and x-rays are by and large normal you get an MRI done and then you see the impingement and let me tell you in these people we do a special test also that's called an impingement test at the hip so in this test we take the hip into flexion adduction external rotation and this particular position leads to pain in hip so when this impingement test at the hip is positive Samir we take up these people for an MRI we see those cam and pincer impingements we advise them arthroscopy so clear Samir when to think about it so you will have a young person he will be coming to you with a hip pain with a by and large normal x-ray not much of degeneration in the cartilage will be seen means there will be absolutely normal joint space so there will be normal joint space so that means arthritis has not set in so this is the stage where you can get these people up in the early stage you take them up for arthroscopy you repair these labral tears you repair uh, those cam pincer impingements and you can save an eventual joint replacement surgery clear enough guys so any other query make it to Samir anyone else with any query before I end up this session all right fine enough so this is again in an area where not much is there in your books but trust me an MCQ from that area and you could crack it a straight advantage so I hope you enjoyed this session. So subscribe for more such classes. All the best. Good night for today. Bye-bye.